war. Human life is very valuable. During a war, it's not only the people that suffer, it's also the land and it's wildlife that suffers a terrible blow. The Australian Armed Forces led an international peacekeeping force to stop the bloodshed in one of Australia's closest neighbours, East Timor. Aussie soldiers are affectionately known as diggers and they work quickly and effectively to sort the country out. And when the heavy fighting settled down, they called on me to carry out a wildlife rescue mission. G'day and welcome to the steamy tropics of Southeast Asia. We're just north of Australia, East Timor. And this place is war-torn. There's UN soldiers, troops, police from all over the world here right now as a peacekeeping force. This is Dili. Used to be a thriving metropolis, the biggest city of East Timor. Now it's just a giant chunk of rubble. Refugees pushed back out into the scrub. A lot of them killed. They're starting to fill the back, starting to come back. I'm here to help the most sacred of animals here on East Timor, right at that church. Once the fighting had settled down, I made the decision of sending in my Australia Zoo team to help the army coordinate one of the greatest wildlife rescues we'll ever be involved in. The United Nations are helping to rebuild East Timor. And I'm here to meet up with Wes Mannion, my best mate and the team leader. They've been in here for a week building Crocodile enclosure. Hey, big bud. Hey, here you go, mate. Hey, 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 yeah, not bad. Did you have a good flight. Yeah, yeah. Geez, you look pretty fit. <laughs> yeah, buddy. East Timor has recently gained independence. They're a small country just north of Australia in Southeast Asia. When the army discovered the plight of two crocodiles needing help, they contacted the World Society for the Protection of Animals. WISPA, as they're known, contacted Steve immediately, knowing that the team at Australia Zoo would be the only ones with the expertise to carry out this mission. The army dropped me straight at the church where the biggest of the two crocodiles that we have to restrain is living in atrocious conditions. By crikey, I've seen some hardcore bad husbandry of crocodiles before, but this takes the cake. He was over 11 feet long in an 8 foot long concrete box with wire over it. And that was bad enough. The East Timorese people don't understand crocodilian husbandry. They love their crocodiles. In fact, they believe that their island of Timor is actually a solidified crocodile. That's one. Now for the other one. Have a look at this for appalling conditions. This poor female nine-footer is housed in a bacteria backwash. Over the last few hundred days we've been looking after. Yeah, and she's come good. She also had a tyre around her neck. We managed to get that off with a long piece of bamboo. So. Like a car tyre? It was a bicycle tyre. Oh, so my it was, word. It was right around her neck. Yeah, so we got that off her. She's been tortured and injured. Looks like she's blind in this eye. Yeah, I think she's been poked. The other eye looks good and bright. Yeah, last time we've seen her been stabbed. Yeah, there's been, eye. every time you come in here, there's sticks in here. Like people have been whacking her. Yeah, the most dangerous thing is going to be the water. Um, any cuts, open wounds you got, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. So I wouldn't mind getting her rather than hitting her in there, because, crikey, I don't know what kind of bacteria and disease you're running up against Pretty there. Bad, get her out here on the dry ground, and then we'll jump up straight into the ocean, all of us, straight in. This beautiful little female crocodile has been living in these conditions for more than 10 years. Up 
here in the Timorese highlands, there's a real serenity and tranquility. Down there in Dili is turmoil and pain. It's quite hard to see it from here. But what you can get the gist of from right up here is that Timor is right at the end of the Indonesian archipelago. You can see another island out there, another volcanic island, just like this one. And so East Timor was Portugal territory up until 1975. And then they moved out, Indonesia took it over. However, the East Timorese didn't accept that. And so there's been quite a strong guerrilla movement for well over 20 years. And then in 1999, they went for independence and scored it. And that's caused the problem. The clash took place. The militia went wild. Death and destruction. And so then, as a result of independence and the guerrilla warfare and the fighting with the militia, the place got tortured, blown up, shot out. Refugees pushed into camps, thousands, tens of thousands of refugees suffered for long periods of time. And now it's all starting to get back together. It's quite horrifying to see the torture us humans put each other through. And nothing is more visual than war and refugees. This is what the people from Dili, the refugees from Dili, had to do. They had to flee back up to any pockets of jungle that they could possibly get into to avoid, whoa, the conflict, the turmoil, the hatred, the firepower and the absolute destruction. It's a very peaceful, tranquil place. But the militia, they came in. They came in after them. They came into the jungle. And the guerrillas of East Timor, they've been working out of these jungles for over 20 years. And they knew about snakes. Oh, here's a little snapper. Have a look at this. You'd barely be able to see it. The only thing I got to see was a small amount of movement and this is a baby, oh, you're all right, buddy. Baby green tree viper. Bite, they bite like all crazy. Come on now, naughty. There he is there. Look at that gorgeous emerald green coloration, real arrow shaped head. And they've got huge fangs for the size of their body, really big fangs. And this snake here, he'd put me almost into the mark where I'd just about die, I reckon. Look at that. Excellent arrow-shaped head, quite a big head, big venom glands, they've got a big delivery, and if he sunk them in by crikey, I'd be in a lot of trouble. A big one would kill you. This one would be a yearling, only around about a year old. Now you can see on the end of his tail there, different colour, and he'll actually wiggle that, stick it out and wiggle it, a bit like that, wiggle it up and down, and that'll lure things like little lizards, like a gecko will come in while he's wiggling it. We call that a caudal lure. Stick it up like that, wiggle, wiggle, looks like a worm. Gecko comes in, whack, he'll hit, sink those fangs right into the chest cavity, fill it up full of venom, immobilize, kill it, and then swallow it down head first. Green tree viper. Sorry it's shaking, but these things make me really, really nervous because they're quick strikers. You can see that S position he's holding there, maintaining, poised, in the S position, ready to strike if my fingers get close enough. Okay, mate, you're a little beauty. Okay, here you go. Whoa, 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 steady, mate, steady. There you go. They're quite an arboreal species. Climb through the trees and on the ground. Where's your mum and dad? This is the piece of land right behind the church that was graciously donated to house our crocodiles. Wes has his work cut out for him. What he's got to work with is basically a pile of rubble. The whole area in Dili has been under siege in a war-torn situation. What hasn't been leveled is 